Hi everybody, Eric Alexander at Tecton Design here. And I realize that we've really struck a nerve and I understand why there are some reviewers, amateur and professional, that are nervous about the situation that's unfolded in the last week. And I feel the necessity to talk about it. So number one, <clears throat> I have to say, my words and my level of aggressiveness has been blown completely out of perspective. And I'm not suing anybody. I'm not suing anybody, okay? And with two reviewers that I was having problems with, I used the word litigation. So let me share my perspective on litigation. And I'm not talking about ending up in a courtroom. Litigation in my mind was at the time and still is today that my lawyer calls your lawyer. They sit down for 20 minutes and inspect the facts and then we get something accomplished that is good for me, for them, and more importantly, for the consumer. So I hope I've made my point clear. Now, we seem to continue to have problems with measurements in these reviews. And I gotta tell you, from my perspective, it's a little bit, um, it's like the wild, wild west, and we're in some uncharted territory. And I wanna lay my opinion out to the consumers. I'm speaking to the guys that might buy my products and their audio files and they love music. So here's a little bit of perspective. <clears throat> so if my loudspeaker is reviewed by a hi-fi YouTube reviewer and I take one look at it, I've measured a lot of speakers. We've got, we've got six figures of loudspeakers that have been produced, multiple six figures of handmade custom loudspeakers They've all been measured before they've been put in boxes. I worked as a product development engineer for many, many years before I started Tecton Design. I feel confident in saying I've taken at least 20,000 acoustical measurements. That's a lot of measurements. And most of the time when I see a flawed impedance curve, I instantly discern what it is. That's the way, that's just based on experience. So twice now, in the, last, uh, in the last few weeks, I've looked at impedance curves that have been carried, that have been, that have been published by reviewers that have contained uh, what I've discerned as an in instantaneous flaw. So I've reached out to them, I've asked them to fix it, and the pushback that I've gotten in return is that no, I don't wanna fix it. And it was only at that point that I brought in the word litigation. And again, to be perfectly clear, litigation in my mind was at the time and still is now that our lawyers sit down and find a speedy resolution. So I wanna talk about the professionals, the true professionals. And by the way, what I see here today um, from my perspective as a manufacturer, a guy that's been in this industry for over 30 years, is a lot of reviewers jockeying for position to become the next John Atkinson or the next Vance Dickinson. They're not gonna be doing this for a lot longer. And I'm surprised that, um, that they're continuing to do it. I'd, I'd be on a boat somewhere at that age. Um, and by the way, my recommendation for the guy that replaces John Atkinson, uh, un, without hesitation, Dr. Timothy Leishman, graduate from Penn State University in acoustics, the number one university in the world in acoustics, that came to Brigham Young University to head up the Harvey Fletcher Acoustical Laboratory there. For those that don't know, Harvey, Harvey Fletcher is credited with inventing stereo, the thing that we uh, worship and love, and also the Fletcher Munson curves that uh, eventually evolved into the equal loudness contours. So, Back to the professional reviews. Within the last month, we've had a sterophile review of our Moab published. And you need to know, this is how it works. We've done this many, many times and it mitigates 
misunderstandings, the, the type of misunderstandings that we obviously are getting today. I've spent a lot of time, I've sacrificed years of my life doing something that I love to produce these models. And when I see a flawed measurement, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna call it, and, and I'm gonna call it. So, and it's not just sterophile, it's all of the, it's all of the re magazines that we know. They have spent a ton of time capturing measurements, John Atkinson, for example, and the reviewer that writes the review. They send that to me in a PDF form with the clear understanding that, Eric, we want you to proofread the review and we want you to fact check it. You cannot change anything. You cannot disclose how good or bad or critical the review is. That compromises our relationship, but fact check it. Make sure there's no mistakes in it. And that includes the measurements. I do that and then we anxiously await the review to go public. That's how this works. Now, when a passionate, you know, we all have the same love of music and we are all very much a bunch of like-minded people. And it really hurts to have people just, I mean, I've had hate mail, hate, hate mail, literal hate mail um, over this last week. I've also had a lot of people on my team go, Eric, we are in support of you. We support you. And so how do we get to that common ground? I really don't appreciate it when someone goes out, gets a speaker, probably on the secondhand market, or one of our clients loans it to them, completely unsolicited, they take some measurements, and then they measure it. And the measurement contains an oversight. I'm gonna be really kind. I'm not trying to offend anyone or hurt anyone, okay? Um, and again, I, I wanna be really sensitive here. I don't wanna, I wanna make friends with everybody. I love what I do and we all love music. But here's a question. If a, if an ordinary guy or even a, a, if a guy went out and bought an airplane does that make him a pilot? And think about that. My answer is not quite yet. There's more work to do. I am in full support of people that want to be entrepreneurs and publish these measurements and publish these hi-fi reviews of products, including my own. We don't get enough reviews. I'd, I'd submit every speaker over and over and over again. But I mean, this is good for business. However, with the caveat, that the review can't contain mistakes that are provable. Furthermore, you don't wanna publish a mistake that's provable and then elaborate on it and uh, draw arrows to, uh, you know, what we've seen recently, um, arrows to a bump in an impedance curve that I took, look, I looked at it and in two seconds realized that the box didn't have the feet in it, so the cabinet was leaking and we got a camel hump there and that's pressure loss. And then to have a narrative developed about, well, it's a resonance. Well, yes, it's a resonance, but the, the potential client thinks that we have a poorly constructed cabinet when we have, a sol we have a very solid cabinet with internal braces. And it's just a, com it's a, it's a communication misfit and, and, and we need to get past that. So again, I wanna go back to, the, back to what Sterofile does. Hopefully, um, I know there's uh, these, I know online reviewers are nervous. I've, I've seen the videos that have been done directed straight at me. And um, we've got to find some common ground here. I'd love to go, um, I'd love to go on live with some of you. And, and we sort some of this stuff out. So anyway, my, 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 my proposed solution to this is very simple. Uh, I'm in support of you reviewing my products. I'm in support of you taking measurements. By the way, after this, uh, I, I have absolutely come to the conclusion that every new model that we develop, starting now, 
every new model that we develop, we are going to include all of the measurements, everything. There's, we don't have to hide anything. We've, we've, had, we've had a lot of very successful, successful measurements produced by reviewers. And uh, just to help you understand why I've done what I've done, um, Wilson Audio is 10 miles from me. I think like them. I respect them. I think David Wilson was a genius. And um, I don't want to publish measurements. I want to keep my cards close to my chest. That's the way I am. I want the speaker to sell itself. I want the audio file to sit down. And let's not talk about the nitty gritty. Just listen to the thing. Does it sound good? Does it sound right? That's, that's been my attitude all these years. Uh, that's going to change. We're publishing measurements. So I, again, I'm going to be adamant here. I would propose that you do all your stuff, you collect your measurements, and then at that point, what's the harm in sending me images of your measurements and going, we're unsolicited or solicited. I don't care. Eric, we just want you to fact check. We're, we're not going to... We're not going to let you stop us, but we just want you to fact check. Do you see anything that looks out of the ordinary here? Because if you do, would you please make us aware of it? And I'm in return, I'm going to go, you know what? If, it, if, it's, if it's similar to what, I, what I've seen already, I'm going to let it fly. I'm not going to be critical. I'm not going to be overly critical. After all, it's about how these things sound. That is the most important thing. We can get down to the nitty gritty about if a speaker should be linear or if it shouldn't be linear, make all the arguments uh, to, and, to and against everything else. But when it all comes down to it, how does that speaker sound? So I am truly sorry for what's unfolded here. I've, I've felt obligated to stand my ground. I'm not suing anybody. <laughs> that's, that's, that was not my intention. Again, my intention was to use lawyers to go, look, we got a sticky problem here. Um, let's get this thing put to bed. You gotta remember, I mean, I got, I, got a dozen, I got a dozen acoustical patents. I got friends, my best friend's a lawyer. I'm around lawyers, I'm not afraid of lawyers. Lawyers are, um, uh, they can be tremendously good tools. Not all lawyers are bad apples. And I think I've said enough. So anyway, there's kind of the Eric perspective to all this um, firestorm that's been going down. And I hope this will help really soothe, soothe things over. And uh, reviewers that see this, we want to send you speakers. And I've explained what I would like to see in return. And I hope we can find some common ground. And uh, anyway, there you go. And happy listening. Take care.